Hello and welcome to the continuation of class one in ME 236, Introduction to Thermodynamics, This Speech Thermodynamics 1. I need to start changing that. All right, so this is what we went through in the first class. Let's get down to, uh, okay, so we, where we left off? Oh, we left off with dimensions and units. All right, so uh, a dimension uh, can be thought of as like the building block to units. Um, and our basic dimensions are, um, so I can remember it by, we have M, the MLT and the FLT system is what we will talk about in uh, fluid mechanics. We don't really need it right now, but it's a good way to think of things. Um, and that'd be, we could, we, we, our basic building blocks are mass, length, and time, or force, length, and time. All right, so that's it. Doesn't matter why we have these two of them, but it's a good idea to you know we, we could go. I, I'll I'll actually write this down. Okay, so. And then um, the other dimension that we don't uh, use, and a lot of times for these guys, for whatever reason, use um, uh, theta. Uh, sorry, we also have temperature. So um, I can point, I can show you that we can make just about any unit. There are some units you can't, but just about any unit you can break down into a series of dimensions where you have it's a combination of a mass, a length, a time, or and a temperature, or a force, right? Uh, the reason why I have two different is because mass and force are related to each other by F equals MA. So you can write something, you, you could, instead of doing just mass length and time, you could do, write the dimension again in force length and time, and temperature, by the way, any of them in temperature. We just, we don't use the temperature ones all that much in fluid mechanics. But fluid mechanics is like a branch of thermodynamics, if you will, in, in some respects. Um, but it's just not as fo focused on the thermal side of the thing. Um, so there's three uh, main primary unit systems in use uh, today. I say that in use, but some of them are pe peculiar to um, engin engineering education in terms of it being in practice. Um, but the main one that we should be converting to is SI, which we, we think of as the metric system, right? The metric system. And that's composed of, if we were going to go for... Uh, let's let's write the thing out. Let's write it out as I have it up above. It could be the mass is kilograms, the length is meters, the time is seconds, which you know doesn't change between you know we we is the primary units, right? We we could also use hours and we could also use kilometers, right? We could use grams, but these are the primary ones that we use uh, for calculation in this class. Um, now that's that's the mass, length, and time. We also have force, which is a newton. Right? But, but a newton could be replaced with a kilogram meter per second squared. So that's why we have these, we're talking up here, there's two different systems. Um, and then of, in temperature, we have two. We have uh, degrees Celsius, old people call it centigrade. Um, and then we also have Kelvin, right? So here are the system of units that we would use for SI. We have another one, and I, I um, because I teach dynamics, I'm, I'm, we call British gravitational. I didn't bother writing it out. You can if you want to. Um, sometimes this is U.S. units, um, or as I think about them. Now, for the mass here, for the British gravitational, and this is in dynamics class, we use slugs. Uh, because we're using slugs, slugs are based on feet, right? So instead of using inches, we use feet. In my mechanics and materials class, we, we would use inch as our primary basic uh, um, uh, length, but this is what we usually use in British gravitational. And seconds, obviously, is what we have right in there. Uh, for force, we have pounds. We don't make a distinction of what kind of pounds they are most of the time. If I accidentally do, well, then I'm sorry. But, um, and, and sometimes we'll actually put an S on the end of that. I don't know why I don't always, I'm not consistent with it. Uh, then we have degree Fahrenheit for this and a degree Rankine. All right, so 
here's going to be the big difference in the third kind. And this is the kind of thermo uh, traditionally uses, and we can't seem to break away from it. I'm going to call it the English system. I think that's what's called in the textbook, the English system. But I, I, it's not fair to them because they they didn't do it. I mean, they, they, they've changed over to metric. So I apologize to our friends across the pound. Um, so their mass is going to be pounds mass. That's kind of silly. It's silly, but that's true. Um, they still have feet. They still have seconds. But now we have pounds force. So the difference between pounds mass and pounds force. And we have to, because of the tradition of it, we have to get used to it. And they also have degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Rankin. So there's the big differences between here, this guy and that guy and that guy and that guy. And um, so th this is uh, what I say is the stupidest part of thermodynamics units, in my opinion. I'm sorry, I'm a solid mechanics guy most of the time, so I gravitate towards. And this, is, this was irritating to me in undergrad and can be irritating. But it can all be solved with this. If you just think of this right here, that right there, and keep it in the back of your mind. And any time you you, you're dealing with a pound's mass, and what you want to find is a pound's force, use this conver uh, conversion. And don't get your head turned up in a knot, because they can. You could when you read the explanations of this pound's mass to pound's force, it could turn your head upside down. So don't. I my opinion. This is my experience. Do not go too crazy with it. It's what you could think of in. Um, you know, there, you could think of this thing in terms of uh, what happens with a newton kilogram meter per second squared that equals to one and anytime that you so, so what i usually think of is when i see the grouping of kilogram meter per second squared poof that turns into a newton if i see a slug feet per second squared poof that turns into a pound but if you see a pound's mass foot per second squared, you need to, as you were right here, you need to multiply it by this thing to poof, turn it into a pound force. It just needs to. And, and so it looks ridiculous to multiply and then divide. And you could really make the case of like, does one pound mass equal one pound force? Well, yes, it does on the surface of the earth, right? But that's only for the weight of the thing. So it doesn't actually, one pound mass does not equal one pound force. Only when under one circumstance, and that's when you're dealing with weight and you're dealing with gravity, right? You're dealing with this pound mass times the acceleration of gravity, then yes, you multiply that, but you don't really get 32.14 pounds mass per foot uh, uh, second squared. Well, you can't just go poof. You have to use this conversion factor. And if you just think of it in those terms, you'll be fine. But if you get your head twisted around like I would always do to myself, no, you will be messed up. Um, I'm going to mention, do a little call out to, uh, let's see, try to get that straight. The conversion factors that are in the back of the book um, in table A1. Go take a look at them. Open up your book and take a look at them. I haven't given you all of them. You have to have the book. Uh, these people think, for whatever reason, that gravity is this. Engineers go 9.81 meters per second squared, and they don't worry about this nonsense over here. Right? Engineers think of it as 32.2 feet per second squared, and they don't go crazy with this all this other stuff over there. Right? It's a standard thing. You don't have to go crazy if you're in a if you're in a laboratory. And you're doing something that requires some type of magical prescription. Uh, you're, you're a physicist, right? So, so you know, not, not an engineer. Um, there you go. I'm just gonna stick with that. That's small. That's long enough. That's long enough. Sure. I'll see you in the next video. For examples.